Well, you can spend about five minutes on social media before you start seeing self-diagnoses of ADHD and autism and even narcissism just all thrown around. Yeah, but what does it actually mean to self-diagnose? So Dr. Aggie is a psychologist and she's joining us now. Hi, Dr. Aggie, good afternoon. Good afternoon, thank you for having me. Thank you, so why is self-diagnosing becoming so popular? <laughs> So social media is becoming more and more popular and more and more accessible. So things like TikTok and Instagram, people have more access to it. So when you give people more access to things, they start sharing information about what they know about their own diagnosis or what they're aware about other people's diagnosis. And it just becomes more available to the public to access. Uh, let's talk about the actual risks, those potential risks of self-diagnosing. So there are tons of risks. Although it's great to have access to uh, resources of social media and be able to get information that way, oftentimes what happens is people will view a TikTok video, see some of the characteristics of said diagnosis, and then they might say, oh, that's so me, I have ADHD, or that's so me, I have OCD. And the risk is, obviously, we're not, you know, they're not professionals diagnosing, so they might be putting themselves in a category that's not appropriate for them, and then subsequently doing things related to said diagnosis to be able to function better, but it could backfire if it's not the correct diagnosis. For sure. And not only for mental, uh, mental diagnosis, but also medical diagnosis yes. as well, too. Yes. It's a very it bad way to go. Very dangerous, yes. And, and Dr. Absolutely. And, yeah. Dr. Egg, are there any benefits to self-diagnosing? Um, there definitely can be benefits to self-diagnosing. The first one is, you, you guys, I'm sure I've heard of this, awareness of the situation, right? So uh, observing like TikTok videos and Instagram, it gives people the idea of, oh, there might be something going on. So even though it's not a full-blown diagnosis, it can be helpful in allowing the person to gather more information in terms of identifying these are the characteristics I should look out for. But the issue comes where then they identify themselves and I start um, identifying themselves as said diagnosis rather than going to the mental health professionals to get the appropriate diagnosis. Dr. Aggie, uh, how can people balance this whole self-awareness and professional diagnosis, especially for conditions like ADHD or autism? It's a, it's a tricky balance, but my rule of thumb is gather your information from wherever you can. So get the information, we all do it, right? We all Google information whenever we hear there's a concern. So get your information, get curious, gather all your data, and then take that information and go to a trained professional. So this doesn't mean your neighbor, <laughs> this doesn't mean you know a best friend that you're just venting with and you wanna, you know, just, hey, I have, a, I have these symptoms. Do you think I have ADHD? Yeah, you do. No, don't go to your friend, don't go to your neighbor. Go to a qualified professional. So that's a medical professional, that's a psychologist, someone that could then take the characteristics that you've identified and translate that into something that is a diagnosis and more importantly, intervention that you can get as a result of the diagnosis. All right, and we are hearing it from a licensed professional, psychologist, Dr. Aggie. Uh, thanks for joining us and sharing the information here about the the negatives and positives of self-diagnosing. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Have a beautiful afternoon.